Hey, how's it going? My name is Daryl. Welcome back to this channel. This is a new series for the finance tutorial. I will simply call it as Python and Excel for finance because Excel will be an important part for this series. In this series, I will introduce you how to use Microsoft Excel to generate livestock data or currency data and how to use Python to download those data and connect to those Excel. And finally, how to use Excel to visualize the data at real time. There are two main approaches that I will go through. One is mainly relying on Python and the other is mainly relying on Excel. And of course, there are some flexibilities that we can do a bit mix and match regarding the approach in such a way that it always fits your needs. Say for example, the videos that I'm showing here is to web scrap the live data with the use of Python and then store the data with the use of Excel and finally visualize the results in Excel. So the entire setup is flexible and just depends on what you need. There are lots of things to go through. I'm pretty excited and I hope you enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we dive into the Python and Excel, let's go through these two key approach so that later on you can create your own process flow and develop your own applications. In the upper part, we have the Python approach. This is what we've done so far for the Python for Finance tutorial series. And we have the live data at Yahoo Finance, say for example, and then we use the beautiful shoot or Selenium to capture the data with the use of web scrapping techniques. And then once we capture those live data, we use the we then use pandas to help us to store the data into the Excel file. And here Excel serves as a database. And once we have this database. Uh, which is keep updating and which is keep storing the live data. We will then use the pandas and matplotlib to help us to visualize the data. And that is the approach that we have taken so far. And then at the bottom here, we have another approach that, um, that I just named it as an Excel approach because many of the key steps relies on Excel. Say for example, if you are using Microsoft 365, you can actually use the Excel to generate live data. And once we have the live data, we can then use the PyWin32 to execute the applications, the Excel applications and then use the Python to link up the data and then use the pandas to store the data in another Excel. And once again, this Microsoft Excel is to help us to store the data and serve as a database. And once we have this database, we will then create another Excel. And with the use of VBA, we can then connect these two Excel together to do the live plotting. So here you can see that one Excel is used to generate the data and the other Excel here is to use it to uh, store the data. And finally, we have an other Excel here to help us to visualize the results. There are some pros and cons for each of the methods and each of the approach. Say, for example, if we do the web scrapping with the use of third party, say, for example, if you, we use the Selenium or the beautiful ships to do the web scrappings to capture the live data, in that case, we will have more features or more attributes in most of the cases. Say, for example, when you are doing a web scrapping to capture the information from Yahoo Finance, we can capture the transactions informations. We can capture the transaction volumes. 
On the other hand, if we use the Microsoft um, 365, we do not have those informations. Therefore, for this approach, it will generate more features, generate more attributes. However, it's relatively unstable and slow compared to the other methods. Because at the back end, Microsoft have a direct connections to the database or to the live data. So in that case, it's much more stable and fast. However, we only have limited features provided by Microsoft. Therefore, it will depends on what you need. In a nutshell, for the first approach, it will provide you more features, more attributes, but uh, relatively it's unstable and slow. On the other hand, if you are using the other approach, it will provide you a relatively stable and faster way to capture the data. However, you will have limited features. So that is for the first part. And then in the middles right here, you can see we both use the Microsoft Excel to serve as a database. So these two approach are similar in these cases. Finally, we come to the visualizations. Here we have two approach to visualize the results. The, the first way is to use the Python to visualize the results. And the second way is to use the Excel to visualize the results. There are more functions provided by Python. So in that case, you have more functionalities and you can do more sophisticated analysis. However, in Python, if we are using Matplotlib, in that case, we will have less real-time interactions to play around with the plot. And also, the plotting is relatively slow, especially when we are including so many functions in the Python program. And that will make it uh, even slow. Comparatively, if we use Microsoft Excel to do the plotting, normally we will have a faster response. And also we can do more real-time interactions. However, compared with Python, Microsoft provides less functions in terms of the financial analysis. Therefore, it will depend on your needs. Say for example, in the videos that I showed before, uh, because I would like to include the transactions volumes, in that case, I will just take this approach to help me to capture the data. But because I want to have more real-time interactions with the result, so I take this approach. So this is the established process flow. And on the other hand, in previous lessons, we just take this approach to capture the data and also store the data and visualize the data. Everything is pretty much within Python. And then on the other hand, say for example, if you would like to capture the data um, with much more, with a high frequency, and then on the other hand, say for example, if you would like to capture the data with the youth of Excel and just say you do not need the transaction volume, you can then take this approach to capture the data. At the same time, you still would like to create some complex functions or create some strategies. Uh, in that case, you can take a upper approach to visualize the data or to create your own algo trading algorithm. You can then take this approach to capture the data. And then just in case if you would like to do more sophisticated visualizations or create your own algorithmic trading bot, in that case, you might want to take this approach to visualize the data or create your own algorithmic trading bot. And on the other hand, if you would like to have some real-time interactions or you would just like to simply visualize the 
result, then you can take this approach. In the upcoming lessons, I will base on these three key steps to create different applications. So see you in the next video. Bye-bye.